say, within 24 months, you'll be world champion if you sign with me. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red and blue trim, hailing from Baltimore, Maryland. Forcing the stoppage. And has scored a knockout in over 95% of his fights. He has so much power. There are legends of these kid, of this kid growing up in Baltimore, going into sparring sessions and breaking the nose of multiple sparring partners one after another. And you can see why the kid's a tank. And that's it. Katie Bayless has seen enough. Did you see that, ladies and gentlemen? Kid was 11 and 0. Never been on TV. January 14th. He became world champion, and what we gonna do? We gonna be smart. We gonna move and let him make money and let his money build. Stay composed, you know. He caught me with a lot of good, um, good shots, you know. And I, uh, you know, I took it and I dished it back out. That's what you show. I'm a real dog. That's What's up, fight fans? It's your man, 3K the Boss, aka Mr. Two Hands Up. Bow, bow. You know what it is. All right, man, so let's just go ahead and talk about it. Javante Davis um, just pretty much thrashes another tomato can with a uh, second round. Um, right hook, went to the body, came upstairs with the right hook, put him to sleep. Pretty much bullied the guy the whole freaking fight, just walked him down. But first of all, man, I beg the question who the fuck is Ricardo Nunez? 21 wins, 2 losses, 19 knockouts, never fall in America. And that pretty much explains it. Um, so, you know, this is the thing that bothers me about boxing sometimes. And I just want to go ahead and expand on this a little bit. Um, you, There's guys all over the world. Hundreds, thousands and thousands and thousands of professional boxers, you know. You can turn a professional boxer at any time in your fucking life. But that doesn't mean you're necessarily good. And you can actually pick the opposition that you choose to get in the ring with and you can decide whether or not that's good. And then, of course, your management and everybody else goes out and scouts opposition for you because, you know, in the earlier stages of your career, it's about boosting your profile. And within boosting your profile becomes popularity. It comes up. Uh, Comes with um, endorsements, et cetera, et cetera, and ultimately boosting your profile becomes more money, and you become marquee because the 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 pinnacle of a career is yes, getting the championship belt, but the money comes for the guys that are on the main card and the, the main card and the co-main. That's where the of uh, the real money is generated. Now, for Javante Tank Davis, you know, yes, he is with the PBC No Smoke crew. Yes, he has been brought along quite slowly, but you know, and Due to his discipline, he has gained a belt, lost a belt, and came back to regain that belt once again. Now, I've always had a serious problem with the fact that, you know, Javante Davis, you know, he's a, he's a very young guy. So, sometimes I don't feel like he takes his craft seriously, and I think he, under, I truly don't believe he really can put into, um, put in the thought or words or even begin to understand how truly talented that he is and I'm sure you guys are probably questioning where I'm going with this but um yeah Javante Davis is extremely talented and at 130 you know Javante Davis will beat the fuck out of anybody at 130 I am saying that and I'm standing behind that um there ain't nobody at 130 that can beat Javante Davis. Like, regardless of whether the opposition is trash or whatever, but this is the thing. If you were calling out Tevin Farmer after you just fought a Ricardo Nunez, a guy who was absolutely nothing, who pretty much just shows you he had the basic elements of boxing in the ring, pretty much just tried to stick behind the jab, movement with no power, and couldn't even punch him with conviction in the first two rounds of the fielding. Now, I'm pretty sure with Floyd Mayweather whispering in Javante Davis' ear before he got in that ring, let him go through the first round, coast, then in the second round, do damage, and give him a spectacular knockout. But please do not knock him out in the first round. I'm sure that was probably the conversation. Now, you know, y'all can call me biased or whatever because I'm a Maryland native and Baltimore, you know what I'm saying, and blue crabs running my blood. But at the same time, any guy that is a fan and a true fan of this sport 
can recognize skill set, they can recognize speed, they can recognize footwork, they can just recognize when you are just above and beyond the other guys put in front of you. Now I'm going to jump back to the Tevin Farmer situation where he called him out in the ring and he said he could possibly fight Gambo. And now we all know Gambo is just coming off last night getting a second round knockout. And um, but Gambo is older, you know. Uh, Terrence Terrence Crawford already disposed of him. That's not really a fight I would like to see. Even though on paper, you know, he is more heralded than a lot of the other fighters that Tank Davis is for. And really, you know, the toughest fight that Tank Davis and the only tough fight Tank Davis fought was Jose Pedraza when he won his first belt. Um, <laughs> and that's when he even made the statement that, you know, he was in a fight fight. But this is the thing about Tank that's really going to tick me off. Now, I kind of get... What Money Mayweather and his team is kind of doing here. They're easing them along. We have to remember that Tank is the youngest active, you know, the, the youngest active champion in the sport. Tank Davis is still only 22 years old. Um, like, he's 22, he's 24. Well, either way, you know, he's only 22 to 24 years old, man. The kid's still young. He's got a lot of growing to do. He's got a lot of growing to do behind his craft. But when he mentioned the name of Tavon Farmer at the end of the match, now Floyd is getting to the point where he's like, okay, it's time to let him off the chain. We're going to give him Tevin Farmer because Tevin Farmer really isn't going to hurt him in a fight. He is going to be counter defensive and he's going, and Tevin Farmer doesn't unload with a lot of shots and he's going to stick behind the counter of, you know, that classic Philly shell, Philly roll because he is a very counter measured Philly fighter, just like B-Hop. Um, I ain't going to say like J-Rock Williams. J-Rock Williams does have a... Um, throw relentless shots and you know he has spectacular defense as well you know I can't attribute that to Jared Hurd because Jared Hurd isn't really a defensive fighter he's just going to come forward and try to bully you into the roof but spectacular um, to say the least uh, but I think that you know them mentioning Gamboa and Tevin Farmer they are trying to usher in like saying okay now it's time to let you know what I'm saying let the chain off this nigga we about to put in this work we about to give, um, we're about to give these guys a match that people want to see, considering that people have been complaining about the opposition and so on and so forth. But in this era, you know, it is natural that you can bring along a fighter slow. And my thing is that if Floyd Mayweather is Javante Tank Davis' promoter, and Javante is 100%, as Floyd said, the face of boxing, and then he's responding when they asked him that question, absolutely. Um, and once again, y'all might feel a certain way because I'm a Maryland guy. <clears throat> but yes, I do feel as though he is the future of boxing. I feel as though he will, like I said, he will wash all of the talent at 130. But either way, Floyd is ready to take the dog off the chain, ready to unleash him and let him to do, allow him to do his um, best work. And he's going to start by making an example of Tevin Farmer. Now, my whole thing is this. When you're fighting guys like Ricardo Nunez and you're fighting guys... Um, the other individuals that you're fighting to go down the list, a bunch of tomato cans that I don't even feel like, you know, looking up or particularly care about, you know, that's not preparing you for the upper echelon of boxing, and that's what, you know, gets these guys in trouble. You know, when you're not fighting the best, you're not going to be able to gauge where you sit with the best. Now, Tevin Farmer, as I've stated, he is no threat as far as power to Javante Tank Davis. As a matter of fact, Javante Tank Davis, I feel as though we'll pour on and he'll probably knock Tevin Farmer out in fucking five to seven rounds, man. For real, he might knock him out in three to four. But there is levels to this shit and Javante Tank Davis is levels above the comp um, levels above the competition. Other people might talk a lot of shit by saying he might be doing this and he's doing that, but the promotional companies behind them that are doing that and let him, I mean, we're no strangers to knowing that he is a PBC fighter. But is he ready for the next level? Absolutely. Will he beat Tevin Farmer? Absolutely. Will he run through Gamboa? Absolutely. It's the other fighters that you know, like I said, he'll beat anybody at 130. But of course, everybody's like, oh, Tank won't fight Lomachenko. Well, honestly, a Lomachenko-Tank Davis fight would be for nobody's benefit but the fans. But why would Loma, Loma come down to fight Tank? You know what I mean? So... Um, like I said, man, there's a lot of dogs at 130, but, you know, he's a dog at 130. Like I said, y'all might look at the opposition and say, man, what, what are you talking about? Like, how can you say that? But you, 
you know a fighter. You know an elite fighter when you see one. And Tank is an elite fighter with elite power, elite footwork, elite movement, and elite speed. And I feel as though he will abuse a bunch of guys in the division. We just got to see. If Tevin Farmer happens next, you will see absolute fucking loot is what I'm talking about. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. I wasn't impressed by the matchup. It's one of those things where you already know the outcome. But I am impressed by the kid's star power. I do see that he is the future of boxing. And I do see that, you know, he has the potential to fill seats on a, a very, very, very rapid level. Now, we just got to see what the plan is going into 2020. Because I think the plan is really going to be set for Javante Davis coming into 2020 I think Javante Davis is going to make a, um, make some noise but Javante Davis has got to get in the ring more I think he should be a lot more active as a fighter and I just think that you know he's got to push up the caliber of opponent but other than that great knockout as usual and um I'll be the first to tell you man he's going to knock Tevin Farmer the fuck out contrary to belief but as we always say it costs you nothing to pay a nigga